What a beautiful day to be out hiking in the desert. One of my first hikes in quite a while. We're not doing an overnight, so it's not a backpacking trip. But we're just out enjoying the weather. It's a beautiful day. Blue sky up there. I'm not too far from the highway, so you might pick up some highway noise. I'm just coming back in off the trail. It occurred to me this might be a good time to sit down and answer some questions. Some of you have asked me, what about hiking in the desert? What are the dangers? What are you worried about? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, I think that there is a difference between hiking in the desert and backpacking in the desert. Actually, obviously, to backpack you also hike. But <clears throat> for the most part, backpackers are prepared to spend the night. Sort of the idea of backpacking, obviously. So if you get lost, and that's one of the dangers of the desert or anywhere, um, my advice is uh, sit down, don't go anywhere. Make a camp, get comfortable, and someone will come find you. And let's hope that happens. But if you're backpacking, you've got all that gear. So you should be prepared to spend the night. If you're hiking, <clears throat> make sure you have the gear with you. I always carry a space blanket, <clears throat> uh, a sit pad. Uh, well, I'm wearing my little back day packing to pack right now. Uh, obviously some food, fire starting equipment, <clears throat> a mine, uh, first aid kit, that type of thing. So you're ready for most anything. But uh, that's, that's sort of obvious, I suppose. So let's, uh, I want to find a place to get comfortable. I'm big on getting comfortable. And then we'll, uh, let's talk more specific about some of these items. <clears throat> that <clears throat> I hope you can see me okay <clears throat> we found ourselves a nice spot I think the Sun's all right so anyhow let's uh, go ahead and talk about some of the days of the desert I guess <clears throat> when you think about hiking in the desert the first thing most people think about is snakes and sure there are snakes there are snakes all over the place. I don't see too many. Uh, I think the important thing about a snake, particularly a rattlesnake, which is in this part of the country is what you generally find as far as the poison uh, snakes, would be to leave the thing alone. It doesn't want you around. Uh, it doesn't want to be around you, so it's gonna run away. So leave them alone. Just stay away and they're not really a problem. Matter of fact, uh, I'm really honored when I get to see one. Um, I've seen some rattlesnakes. Here's a picture of one that I took, oh, I don't know, a few hikes ago. Last year, I think it was. Um, but if you just stay away from them, you'll be just fine. Don't mess with them. That's what happens with most people when they have a problem with a snake, is that they're fooling around, they're trying to pick it up, or they're poking at it, or throwing rocks at it, or whatever, leave them alone. Also, in the desert, you'll see Gila monsters, but boy, you're lucky if you see one. Again, here's a picture of one I took um, about the same time as I found the uh, rattlesnake, as a matter of fact. Um, they're beautiful, they're colorful, they're not very fast. Again, leave them alone. Yeah, they're the only poisonous lizard in the United States. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, if you... Uh, just take some pictures and watch them and then leave them alone you'll be just fine uh, scorpions <clears throat> I've never seen one <clears throat> um, I know they're here they're not deadly but they hurt like hell if you get bit that's what I understand so I always check things like my uh, boots etc when I get up in the morning and I want to put stuff back on again if I'm in a tent I keep it zipped up so nothing crawls in with me at night 
Um, but generally speaking, like anything else, leave it alone. Um, I've seen also the desert centipede, which I understand is a poisonous centipede. But they're generally out at night. I was lucky to see this one during the day on the trail. Um, and again, leave them alone. So any of the creepy crawlers, um, I think you're just fine. Just stay away, leave them alone. Don't hurt them, they're not gonna hurt you. Well, people say, what about all the animals? Not the snakes, but the animals, you know. The, ma the mammals, well, <laughs> there are, um, <clears throat> even in the superstitions, in the Sonora Desert, but the animals, obviously, I've seen, luckily, lots of them. Um, everything from coyotes to uh, fox to um, bobcats, bighorn sheep, mule deer, but there aren't any, really any, big animals that'll really care to hurt you. Um, uh, even up in Montana where I hike, the black bear, um, I guess can be aggressive, but if you yell at them, tell them, go away bear, they'll go away. Uh, grizzlies and parks can certainly, that have adapted to humans can be dangerous. But in the desert, um, there's not much to worry about. I will have to say that uh, last year and the year before, and maybe the year before that, um, we had a number of rabid foxes, um, fox with rabies, um, about in the desert. Warning signs were put up. I know a number of people have run, ran into them. They act very strange, very aggressive, and again, get get away from them, throw rocks at them, etc. I've had folks ask me, well, why don't you carry a gun? And I say, what for? Uh, if a snake is going to bite me, it's going to be a whole lot quicker that I'm going to pull out that gun and shoot it. And they're heavy. When I'm backpacking or even day hiking, I'm interested in keeping things light. So as far as the mammals are concerned, uh, I'm not too concerned. I think you'll be okay um, again. They don't want to be near you any more than you want to be near them. So make noise. Um, if you see them, enjoy them, take pictures, just leave them alone. You know, one of the most common um, problems I've seen, dangers, are people that fall. And I've mentioned this a number of times in my other videos, not only hiking for seniors, but uh, any age, always use tricking poles, hiking sticks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they've saved me a number of times. Um, they're essential when you're crossing water. Uh, those boulders can get awfully slick. But I think they're very helpful anytime. This sand can be very slippery uh, and uh, falls are dangerous. So protect yourself from falls by using a hiking stick. Um, another thing is to wear comfortable shoes. You don't need to wear heavy boots. A lot of people are using trail runners now. And whatever is comfortable and that you can grip the, the path with, the trail with, the rocks with, wear them. Keep them tight and uh, be safe. So guard yourself from the falls, but carry your, your, trekking, your trekking sticks. Well, I think probably the most obvious danger in the desert and probably the most common uh, danger are the prickly fellows, the cactus. And I tell you what, they can hurt. If nothing else, they can sure ruin your day. The worst cactus that you could possibly get would be the cactus you sit on. Because if you're hiking by yourself, and maybe even worse if you're hiking with someone you don't know real well, someone's got to pull that cactus out of your butt because otherwise you are in misery particularly if you're backpacking, and you're gonna have to keep that in there for quite a while. So cactus, be careful where you sit. I use a sit pad. Now, this thing is inflatable. It's a thermal rest, small one from REI, but, um, and it might pop, but that's okay. At least uh, you'll keep the cactus out of me. Now, obviously you're not always gonna sit on them. You're gonna touch them. Uh, I always have 
with me are wear gloves. Simple leather gloves. They're multi-useful. I use them when I have to take a pot off the, off the fire that's hot. Um, but they'll, they'll really protect your hands. If you slip and fall and grab something, um, you've got your gloves on and that's helpful. Now, let's say that you do end up with the, the uh, thorn from a cactus. One thing I always carry, and I carry some right here on my, my trekking pole, is tape. Any kind of tape will do. This is duct tape. It usually is, has worked well for me. Duct tape will take out the small, little tiny, particularly, uh, stickers from the cactus. Um, and it'll even work uh, on the area you can't see too well, hopefully. Otherwise, in my first aid kit, one of the important things I carry are tweezers. Because you just can't, I can't anyway, see the, uh, the little thorns. Which uh, it brings up another point as far as a safety item. Um, if you wear glasses or need reading glasses, bring an extra pair so that you can see the little uh, thorns when you need to pull them out with the tweezers. So cactus are a uh, are real common danger for backpackers, for hikers, for anybody. But with the proper wood, foot gear and watching where you're stepping, which is a good idea anyway from a safety point of view, you should be all right. Um, just be careful and stay away from the cactus. One of the uh, obvious, I say obvious dangers of the desert is it is hot and it's dry. Be sure you carry enough water. I've seen a lot of videos and read a lot of books on surviving in the desert and telling you how much water you need. I don't know, it depends on you. I always carry at least a, a liter a day for drinking water and try to carry an extra liter uh, for emergencies. Um, yes, there is desert or water in the desert. Um, can you find it easily? It depends on the year. This year, uh, this is now my first video of 2021, uh, it's been extremely dry. The monsoon season in most of Arizona was almost non-existent in uh, August, September, October of 2020. So the desert is very, very dry. And unless it's an established spring that you're aware of, um, you're probably not going to find much water in any of the potholes. So carry enough water with you. Carry a uh, water filtration system so that when you do find it, you can uh, you know, filter your water. What I generally do is carry a clean bandana because a lot of the water you might find, particularly the drier, drier seasons, might look pretty um, all murky, little algae in it. So first I pour it through the bandana and then I put it into my filter. And uh, that helps save the filter um, and you know prolongs the use um, so that, that it makes it easier to use in the future. I use a Sawyer, a lot of folks do. I do not use the Mini, I use the regular Sawyers. With a, I think it's called Canuck water bag. I, some of my other videos, um, you've seen me use that. Uh, properly and and not properly but in any way um, carry the water you need and take your time keep hydrated sip on your water whether you're thirsty or not and uh, just be careful watch the weather the weather is a danger anywhere but in the desert flash floods are fairly common so if you're in an area or if there is heavy rainfall predicted in your area uh, or even in an area that's within any nearby um, upstream uphill um, be aware of where you're camping don't camp in a wash uh, camp on a higher ground um, and when you if you run into some flash flooding where the water is very very quick um, don't cross. If you don't have your trekking poles, certainly don't attempt it. If you do have them, be very, very careful. Often, if it's a flash flood and the water's really flowing quickly, within a day or so, the water will go down and it'll be easier to cross. 
So watch your weather. Um, uh, be careful of the flash floods. Remember, also, in the desert, in the daytime, it's darn hot. So be careful of the heat. Wear a hat. Keep yourself covered. Also, and um, also, it gets darn cold at night. So if you're backpacking, uh, prepare for a maybe 30 to 40 degree drop in, in uh, temperature, and that'll help. If you're day packing, make sure you have that space blanket or maybe even a small quilt um, that'll fit in your backpack and doesn't weigh much and, and bring it with you. You'll sure be glad if you have to spend the night out there. So those are the major things, uh, the weather, etc. cetera. Um, one other thing is the safety items that you bring along um, should, should be very similar almost every single trip you make. I carry the same safety items whether I'm backpacking or whether I'm a day hiking. And that would include the spot. I use the Spot X. I've mentioned that in some of my other videos. And I'll list some of the links to uh, some of the other videos below that might have that information in it. Um, there are other very good um, uh, d devices that you can use from the Garmin's to the old Spot. The Spot X I like because you can communicate as you can with the Garmin, some of the Garmin's um, via text messaging. Um, but another safety item is, is, you know, we mentioned getting lost earlier. Just be sure you tell someone where you're going and when you're expected out. And <laughs> be sure to check with the people and let them know you actually got out. So, anyway, it's been a nice break. Um, the weather's beautiful. We're going to move on. I, heard, I can hear the, uh, every once in a while, a car go by up there, so I'm getting close to my trailhead. I hope this has been informative and interesting and I hope those of you that asked me about dangers in the desert uh, I've covered what you would like to hear. If not let me know. Uh, check on the, the home page of my uh, channel and you'll see my Gmail address where you can email me some questions or write down here below in the comments. Uh, I didn't bring Jorah with me this time, which maybe I should mention. I don't generally take him on some of these day hikes or even long backpacking trips where I know I'm going to run into a lot of thorns because it can be really painful for the little guys. But next week, I hope we're going to go on a longer trip. We're planning on setting up a base camp and doing some metal detecting and maybe some fly fishing. If we can find some water and I hope you'll join me for that too. But remember, meanwhile, be safe and keep hiking.